She never did as she was told. That was both her curse and her salvation. She was a wicked, disobedient girl who had the audacity to have her own opinion on matters. This proved to be a problem in her old age when the last of her children had died away. None in the village felt sorry for her. This only made her protection of them that much more ironic. She gained nothing but pain for her services, and yet she did it anyway. She was disciplined a great deal in school. That was just the way she was. Some people say that her parents were too lenient on her. Others say she was given too much time to think the wrong thoughts. She read a lot, and it put dangerous ideas into her mind. Then again, it did have its advantages. It allowed her to think when no one else was thinking. How could they have realized the source of their sin and inaction would come back to haunt them? There are many dead here. They all died for different reasons, but most of them were stupid. How could they... How could we not have seen it coming? I know at the time we were blinded by the distractions to the world around us, but looking back it is so obvious. I'm not inclined to mercy on them myself or anyone else who didn't take action when they needed to. How do I get through the day? One little bit at a time, I suppose. It's the little things that matter. You have to take pleasure in the little things or you'll go crazy. I don't mean crazy as an agitated. I mean crazy like those poor souls in the outskirts. The ones who wandered around in bands from town to town thinking they're free, but just scavenging on everyone else. You have to have something to hold on to. Something that keeps you going from day to day. People are best for that. But the daily routine will do when it must. They say they believe in justice. That's a laugh. I remember the time that they brought Hurley up to the courthouse. All he did was ask why the town wasn't doing more to defend itself. He asked what they were doing, just cowering in fear. They got him on a trumped-up charge. Something stupid, like litter in his yard. They stoned him to death. Everyone knew what it was really for. Asking too many questions. Of course, he got his revenge, same as the rest of them. At least he tried to. I was almost tempted to let him through, but I couldn't do that. I'm stupid that way. Malachi 4, 5 through 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. They leave me alone. I'm not like them. My ways are not their ways. I remember the old ways. I honor my ancestors. I didn't forget them. I didn't leave them in the dustbin of history. Not one of my kin did. My mother didn't, my father didn't, I didn't, and my children before the monsters killed them didn't either. It is not our nature to forget. Why do I protect the monsters that killed my children? I would say it was because the right thing to do, and part of that is right. But I think the more wicked part of me knows that they suffer in the shame of what they are. They know their punishment is waiting for them. Sooner or later, the curse will come to claim them, and I find it deliciously ironic that I'm the one that lets them cling to the existence they call a life. 